Okay, we are back. That's right. We promised we would be back talking golf one more time before the end of the year, and we are. This is our Ryder Cup preview with Jan Stevenson. Jan, how's it going? Great, great. I'm looking forward to it. It was great to have Solheim last week, which was unusual to have back-to-back uh, Solheim and then Ryder Cup, but Solheim will go back to even numbers next year, so they'll they'll come right back <clears throat> Excuse me, and play um, at – at Robert Trent Jones Trail up in uh, Washington, D.C. So that'll be fun to see that right off the bat again. Now, we've talked about that before. So that's it's the same thing, right? It's U- it's USA, Europe, women. USA, Europe, but because I've always said that there should be a Women's President's Cup because yes. Europe, Europe did tie, and so they finished up retaining the cup, which was great because it's in their home country. I like that. I'm in their home territory. But and uh, it, but I always feel like it'd be a more of a competition if we had the the, the women's presidents cup because that would consider that would con- be the uh, Pacific Rim, which yeah. you know, a lot of strong players <laughs> in Asia. To say the least, I mean yeah. it's almost like saying that you're going to have a, a uh, some sort of a, a a contest in the NBA, but we're not going to invite blacks. Right, exactly. Yeah. I mean, come on. I mean, this things have just changed uh, yeah. in, in golf, uh, yeah. women's golf. It's, uh, it's a no-brainer. Have they talked about it? Yeah, there's been a lot of talk. I actually met with the PGA years ago and said you should do that because a lot of the, the prize money or the money that to pay for it comes from your golf dues. Like my, I'm a member of the, PG, of the Australian uh, Golf Association, and we have so much money goes towards President's Cup. So I've always said that's not fair that it goes to the men and not to the women. It's you know out, it's taken out of our dues, so it should have a women. And I talked to the PGA, and they said no, unless you come with a sponsor, we're not going to look at it. And I was like, well, well, I mean, with all the money, I know, especially I just that that part of the world, nobody's come up with. I agree. I have a friend that was trying to raise the money with sponsors from Asia for it. And it just fell through. And it's, it's just really a shame because they're such great players. I mean, this year at Solheim, they had four that uh, two of them had changed their citizenship and two of them had come early enough that they were already Americans, but they were from Asia. So there were four. And the only other way to do it is if them is if the Asians change their citizenship or get dual citizenship so they can play in the Solheim. Yeah, well... I don't know. It doesn't sound like the effort is there because if there was enough effort, there's enough money going on around. Uh, people. Especially at the PGA right now, they've got plenty. I actually talked to Liv about it too and said you should do it. But. No, yeah. Yes, that's another topic. For I mean, we <laughs> yeah. kind of all kind of put that in the back uh, about what's going on with the Liv and PGA Tour and we're just – I just let them all figure it out. I mean <laughs> – I guess well, we'll... they've got a new name for the for a tour now, so it's, it's going to be the third tour. So um, right now they have a you know they the the live the live tour is on its own, and then there's going to be the private equity tour, uh, which you know. So I don't know what they're going to do. They've they've left it up in the air of what they're going to call it and if it's going to be a different tour. Oh uh, well, it's yeah. a mess right now. It is. Uh, it's sort of like the mess that's going on in a lot of different uh, sports right now, but we're living through it, so unfortunately. All right, uh, let's talk Ryder Cup because even though the – I mean, this seems like uh, – I mean, USA was a heavy favorite, well, kind of a heavy favorite. They've been a heavy favorite recently, uh, especially when they're on their home uh, course. But right. this year, the odds have kind of come down as well they should have. It's like even – uh, matter of fact, uh, let's take a look at it right here. There they are. The odds are e- pretty much even. USA wow. at minus 110, Europe plus 115, and the tie 11 to 1, but ties don't happen, right? So Well, it happened last week at Solheim, but it's oh, rare. Okay. It's so, very rare. Very rare. Uh, let's move this in there so everybody can see it. Okay. So. Which would mean America retains it because whoever is def- is, owns it. Def- is defending they get to keep it if it's a tie okay now it's interesting because the united states has not won on europe soil in 30 years wow so 
that's quite a bit. And this is a top heavy team. Europe is. Yes. Um, matter of fact, I could probably even see here are their players. Everybody can see the players here. These are the players for Team Europe. And as you can see, they have McElroy, Hovland, and Rom. Now, that's what I say by top heavy. They have those three. They, that, that's probably right now the three best players or the three hottest well, players. Just, you know, Scheffler, of course, we're going to yeah, get into. I agree. And, but then they also have two other. They have, I think they have the top six. They have six very strong players because you've got Terrell Hatton and Matt Fitzpatrick, who's playing really well. So that that kind of makes it, you know, pretty strong, but at least like you said, the three, and then I would say five very strong players that can go any way. The problem with it is that they have a lot of rookies playing, you know, they have, you know, Nikolai and, um, and they have, they have Seth and, and they have Aberg. So, you know, those three, even, but I, what I think with Ludwig, I think that it's going to be kind of a surprise because they're rookies, but if they can get by those first couple of holes, because, on the first tee at Solheim and Ryder Cup, it is unbelievable. Like they, you know how they have it at out at um, the waste management where they have it, all the people around surrounding yes. it. Yeah, that's what it's like on the first tee. And I've been to Solheim and Ryder Cup, and it is crazy. And especially in Europe, they're really noisy and they're really loud, and they have this music blaring, and they're all dancing on the first on the first tee. And it, you get so nervous. I've talked to so many of the players. They say the most nervous they've ever been, whether it's a major, is on the first tier representing your country. He said it's that it, it's so nerve wracking. They said it takes two or three holes to settle down. I mean that we've even like last week at the Solheim, one of the girls absolutely almost whiffed it and hit it so far left that it was you know she almost hit missed it as she was so <laughs> nervous. And it wow. is really really hard. So those rookies are going to have that. And then we have two on the American side too, because we, ha we have a couple of rookies that haven't, you know, played before. You've got uh, Brian Harmon and uh, Wyndham Clark, I think. But they also, they're only, they're not going to be as nervous because it's not in their home country. So it's really nerve wracking. Yeah. And also I think what will be, if, I think the way I look at it with these two specifically, Clark and Harmon, these are, open championship winners yeah. i mean you can't get much especially Harmon winning on european soil that's so, a good point because yeah. if that doesn't make you nervous nothing will and he, he, yeah. he i mean in that last hole to get up and down and he was putting really well i think with brian it depends on how he, what kind of start he gets off to you know if he's struggling because he's probably the shortest hitter on the on probably both tours right now playing in it it it, it's I love his golf swing, so I think he's going to be good. And I would say the cream comes to the top with technique when you are nervous, but it it's going to be hard for him because he's going to try to be tr trying to prove himself that he should be on the team. All right, I tell you what we'll do first is just get an explanation of how this all works. So uh, let's talk about. Uh, matter of fact, I'll, I'll even pop up here. They've got odds day one and day two winner odds, and it's the same. I mean, it doesn't mean anything, you know. If if it's even, it's even. So that there's nothing major. You don't really have to see them. Basically, it's even. So explain what. So there's four balls here. Here I'll actually I'll throw this up there. So there's four four balls day winner, and and is that now how do they do it? Uh, first day and second day with four balls and foursomes. Is it well, one day ball. one day? Four ball means it's, you know, you're playing, it's a two man team. And what it is, is it's the best score of either of those playing their own individual ball on each hole. So say you and I are playing as a team and I have a four and you have a five, then we only count the best score. So okay. it's a four. That's easy. And so the, the way you pick the teams for that is that you usually pick one that makes a lot of birdies that's very aggressive and one that's really steady so you've got a par pretty much guaranteed on every hole okay and then you get someone that's gonna that could make a lot Up of birdies or down. Or okay. long. so that's typically how you choose them except okay. on if we were going to go through the teams we don't know who the teams are yet yeah. they don't announce it till the last minute because they want they kind of want to surprise the other the captain and theirs so that they don't have time to change um, and there'll be a lot of talk as they're playing practice rounds who they want to play with. They'll have sat with the captain and said, look, I, I just 
don't feel comfortable playing with that play, which doesn't usually happen very often. But then you'll get someone like Patrick Cantley and Xander Shoffley who've won, I think they've won every match and they even play together in um, in the team event. So when it's match play like that, they love to play together and they both play pretty steady golf, which is taking away from what I just said. Yeah, because very similar. Both yeah, really steady. They both play a very similar game. They don't, I guess Xander's probably a little more aggressive than Patrick, but they play really well together. I don't think they've ever lost a match. And so wow. you, you know they're going to be out there playing together in the four ball. Okay. And then foursomes? Foursomes is really hard. Most players absolutely hate foursomes. I actually like it. But foursomes is that you will like choose. You know, there might be some par three where you like um, – you, you like a certain hole and that fits you. So you say, okay, I want all the odd numbers. And so you'll have somebody will play even and somebody will tee off on the odd. And then you alternate shot from there. So it's really, really pressure packed because you do not want to give your partner a really bad, you know, you don't want to miss the fairway and have a really hard sure. shot for them or you don't want to hit a putt and hit it five feet by where they've got to try to make it because yeah. – when you're trying to hit a second putt, when you don't see the first putt as well because you haven't putted it, it's really hard to make those five and six footers. And so you'll see a lot more defensive golf where they'll try to just lag it up there if it's got a hard putt because they do not want to give their partner a really difficult putt okay. off, right off the bat. So there's a lot of strategy involved on par fives and like, like I said, on par threes. I always liked and somebody may not want to tee off first because you've got all that gallery and everything. Now, I did hear on the golf course that they were trying to. I, I've I've only played the golf course in this as a, on a simulator, and um, and it's it was at the time wide open. But I heard that Luke Donald, the captain, had asked them if they could grow the rough really long because okay. typically the Americans are the longer hitters overall on the team sure. yeah. and they miss more fairways. Yep. And so they were trying to punish them more, especially in Why the first matches. Yeah. That's the way you're supposed to do it. That's, that's what home cooking is all about. Uh, not just the fans. So is this stress? So what you're saying though, is, is it okay? If I tee off in, 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 on the first tee, does that mean that's the last decision that has to be made, or does that go on every hole? Every hole, you'll play. Every hole, you'll we can read. Odd, we, we can odd on every hole after that. You'll every play okay. one, three, five, and I'll play two, four, six, eight. Oh, so but but it does. What it does say though is is that it, once we make a decision in the beginning of the event to say, okay, I'm going to tee off on odd number holes, and you're going to tee that, and then of course it rotates from there. That's it. It's set. Yeah. We can never change it. Nope. Okay. And that's all it is. It's a restarting from each hole. So it's not like, all right, well, I was the last person that putted on the second hole. So you have to tee off on the third hole. That's not how it works. No, that used to be that way years ago, but they changed it to. Now and do you agree with that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then of course, singles day, this is the easiest one to follow for everybody. So, and as you can see, it's even you know, the odds are even as well. They should be at this point in time. So it's, and, and, and really, so everybody plays and then it's just a matter of strategically trying to place where players play. I always now correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems to me that, and I don't know if this is just, just remembering, but it just seems to me that they always seems to, to play like the better players early. Well, they want to get the points on the board early. And so what they'll do is depending on how they've done the first two days, you know, what they're – say it's nine, you know, nine to whatever, four or something, and then – because there's a point for every win. So what they'll do is they might say, okay, we need um, we, we need this many points to win it. So they'll put the strong players out. But sometimes they'll say, okay – where it looks like the winning one is going to be the sixth player out. So they'll make that player a strong team yeah. so that that can turn it all around and finish it. Uh, it's, it's kind of, there's a lot of, there's a lot of strategy in that because I think, and, and I saw it in Solheim, they did it right. Sometimes they'll typically pick their strongest player against the strongest player. But I think that's a mistake because then, you know, you might, one of them, you've given up a strong player if you lose. Well, I how do you know? Like, 
you, you did, should throw away, not throw away, but give make that player a weaker player and hope that they have a great event and turn it around because you can, especially with Europe, if I were them with having some, I don't know what I said, weaker players, more, you know, rookie players and, and inexperienced players, I would put them against my strong players. Now, the, when they choose the team, you only get to choose alternate. So say um, because America's winning, they get to have the first pick on the singles. So um, he's going to, he's going to go ahead and say, okay, I'm going to pick Scotty Scheffler because okay. he's number one, right? So he'll now the captain then on the other side, McDonald can say, I'm going to go with Rory against him. Okay. So then he gets to choose. And so he'll say, my second choice is going to be Victor Hovland. And then, and so you yes. have, now they'll probably, you know, sometimes they'll predict, they'll say, if Victor Hovland comes out, we want him to go against, you know, whoever, Patrick Cantley. So you can, you get about half of them, you get to choose. And then the other half you don't. So it's, there's, it's really a lot of pot luck too. So it's that part of it. Choosing is very, very crucial. So, so you don't know before, like, just as say the first uh, players are teeing off on, on, on Sunday, you don't know how it's going to go from one to whatever. What is it? 12, 13 players? It's 12 players. 12 players. So um, you don't know how it's have Saturday night. As soon as the, as soon as finish play is finished on Saturday, they, they then announce the winners. And there's a, that's when it's the big, and you'll watch when you have it. it. It's kind of a little bit like, you know, draft day, you'll have the captain with their three vice captains sitting around. And when they, when, as soon as America announces, um, when Zach Johnson announces Scotty Scheffler, then everyone will sit there and go, okay, we already said we wanted to go against that. So that, now sometimes they'll change and you'll see them sitting there making okay. a decision. Do we do Ludwig Aberg against him? And so okay. they've already pretty much got who they want to go against, okay. but they only, like I said, they only get to choose half the time. Okay. So then how, so after the first one, what goes next? Then, the, then, then the um, the opposing team gets to choose. Okay, and then how? When does that like stop? Does it just go until you're done with so the twelve? All the way through the twelve players. Okay, so what about that? Do you so have it? Has it always been like that? Yes. Okay, so it's they've never thought about. All right, well, you just choose your twelve, and the other choose their twelve, and we'll see how it works out. No, that's not. No, it's always no. strategy. Okay. Yeah. I'm all right with that because I like what you're saying. I like the fact that I think it's very, uh, it's good, good TV. It's good to see what, cause like, you know, we all like, like you're saying, everybody loves the draft process. <laughs> and yeah. so it's kind of cool that you get to strategize who's playing against who. So, yeah. so then we'll know who the top, who, who the 12 competitors will be a few minutes, I don't know how long it takes, half hour, whatever, after day two ends. Then, right. we'll, we'll, then we'll be able to overnight, everybody will see, all right, here's your 12 versus 12, and that's how it goes. Yeah. And it's just one goes first, then the second guy gets the opportunity, then the next team gets the opportunity to go first, and it's just back and forth till the end. Yeah. Okay. Now, they typically pick the strong players first, like you said, because they, they want to get the points on the board early to, to get help the other okay. players seize the you know, see, get some confidence and go, okay, because if they start losing, then it puts pressure on the last. And sometimes they'll leave a strong player, you know, to maybe halfway through, they may leave one of their stronger sure. players and, and just, just to, you know, to, to know that they've still got some strength back. And I've seen even, even towards the end do that, but usually the weaker players play last. Yeah. I just still kind of find that kind of weird. It, it's sort of like when I watch, um, all-star games. And I see that they always have, obviously the, Hey, these are the best players. They start. But then at the end of the games, like, like what well, baseball will say, at the end of the games, baseball games, you got all the backups in at the most mm -hmm. crucial time of the game. You got all the backups in to me that never really computed. All. Well, why are the backups in at the most crucial point of the game? But then again, it's not really who cares about the game, but in here, everybody cares. And I would just, yeah, I just kind of find that a little bit weird that, We've seen it happen many times yeah. where yeah. we're waiting until the end and it's the biggest moments and you've got players out there that are not the best players. It's just kind of, 
I don't know. I just always thought that was a little weird to do it. That is a good point. It depends on how they've done the first two days too, you know, because this, this, this choosing uh, format is the same, even from the very first round, they won't know who's playing in the four ball matches until Wednesday night, they'll announce it Wednesday night. Hmm. And so, um, and the same thing after each match. And then sometimes you'll have players now in the matches, they, some of the players actually, um, because it's 36 holes, some of the players will, you know, will opt out. They'll say, Hey, I, I, my back hurts. So I don't want to play 36 holes. Sure. And so, you know, like a Justin Rose, probably the older player. We have a lot of the young players on both teams, but so the older players may not play that second. Uh, yeah. I 18. mean, Justin may say, let me, let me play. And, and because Justin Rose on the European team is, is experienced, I'm sure they'll put him with the young, you know, someone that's never played there before. Yep. So that, because they, you know, the experience, and that's what they're going to have to, I mean, I look at them. Usually I would have thought they'd probably pick all the British players together because, you know, with, yeah. but, but I think with the fact that you got a Sepp Straka and you got, you know, Nikolai and, and um, I think, and Ludwig, that's, they may, they may put them with them. So um, that part of it's going to, but with the younger players, they won't have to worry about it. But I would say a Shane Lowry and a Justin Rose, Shane, because he's not in as good a shape as yeah. everybody else. Probably, we may say, see yeah. you know, I can only do 18 at my very best. And, and, because most of the matches nowadays are going uh, all the way to the last couple of holes. And now this they're, they're and, so close. And this is 36 for, for the first two days. First two days. Okay. And, and by the way, once the match play Sunday uh, matches are set, you can't change them. No. Okay. So no. once they're set, you can't change. Um, and by the way, when you set it up for Thursday, when you set it up for Friday and Saturday, the foursomes and the four balls, are you only setting it up for the first 18 and then you can decide what to do? Or are you setting both up and then, like you said, you can change it before the second, just depending on whether or not a player wants to play that next one? Yeah, I think there's an injury clause too. Um, you you know, to, if somebody to gets injured. hurt on okay. the first two days, not on the Sunday. The Sunday you've just, you, you, you just forfeit the, the match. Okay. But there's an injury clause for the afternoon matches. All right. So let's get into the odds here. And you can give your uh, feeling on all this. So let's see here. What do we go on? That might be interesting. That's, uh, let's see. All right. Uh, biggest winning margin. Let's see if this is, well, what do you, if, 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 and again, you can see the odds here, Jan. So this is, I'm assuming this is the, the winning margin for uh, Sunday, correct? This is how. Oh, we're... wow. So these are the, this, this, these are the odds on whether or not, I guess, you know, what you're predicting what the score would be. And so I guess normally it's six and four, six and five, five and four, seven and six. But it's not usually three and one, two and one. So I'm surprised that they've got the odds so high, six and four. That means that you've you've won, you've basically won six holes with four to go. So you're six up with four to go. That's that's a lot of up. I don't, I can't see any team doing. I mean, being that that high up. I, I mean, that's pretty high. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Usually they're two and one. You know, three and one, three and two. Yes. Yeah, so, well, here down and so here. Yeah. So again, maybe this is something we can try. Again, I've never done this before, but uh, this is. So let me just. Uh, so who were they predicting six and four? Total That's all tied matches. Wow. Okay. Biggest winning margin. And they have two and one down here is 80 to one. So huh. I'm trying to understand why they would have that. If it's the exact know. opposite, yeah, that's opposite to what I I think. All right. Unless they, they maybe they pick it, maybe they think the rookies aren't going to do that well. No. But I can't imagine. I just can't imagine that because I mean that's that's a, you know these these are the best in the world. I, I you know I I know that they're saying the last four or five players on the European team are going to get you know crushed, but I don't I don't think it'll be that much, especially in home territory. 
All right. So there's a lot of momentum when you have everybody yelling and cheering for you. There's something about that that helps. Okay, let's go into this. So uh, top team USA point score. Here are the odds. Obviously, the best players are going to get the lowest odds. It's just like regular, so, sort of like you're betting a golf mm -hmm. tournament. Mm -hmm. So who do you think would be a really good bargain here based on the odds? I guess the bargains probably start somewhere around Morikawa, Homa, and back. So what do you think as far as, again, top team USA point score? I would say, well, I mean, Zand has always been a great match player. He's very steady. You know, he's, he's a great putter under pressure. He, He's, you know, he can control his ball. He's a favorite, kinda... though. So he's six oh, he to is? one. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Scheffler, Cantley, say... Kepka. So Morikawa is eight to one. Home is nine to one. Uh, Homer was see. really good on, on last year. I mean, he made some putts in President's Cup when he had to. He was really impressive. I like Wyndham Clark. At, at 16 to one. Okay. Yeah, I do. I, because. He's very powerful and he's very impressive. He's coming off being really confident and this is his first one. So okay. he's got something to prove. I've heard he's been really working hard. Okay. So, so there you go. And I, I wouldn't even uh, – that would probably be a good idea to throw a few bucks on Clark and Harmon. Absolutely. And you know what? The thing with Brian, I think he's going to be um, a surprise because he plays a lot like Xander does. And In fact, you know, I like I – like, I like Brian's swing. If he's putting well, he hits. Look at him at the at the at the British. I mean, at the Open Championship. I mean, he didn't miss very many fairways. He control. You know, he could hit it around those pot bunkers. It's one of the reasons he won. Is he he only hit one pot bunker in four days. So he can control his driver, which is going to be a big deal. I'm a little bit surprised, but maybe not so much that Thomas is where he is. You know, eleven to one is a decent. It's a good number for him. But again, I know he played a little bit better last week, but still, I don't know. I just uh, till I see it. I know he's a good player in Ryder Cup, so that's the thing. The start's going to be very important for him. I Once totally agree. And and actually, uh, to put him ahead of Wyndham and Brian, I'm yeah. shocked. Yeah, especially that much. Yeah, I mean, a double. Uh, Brian Harmon is getting. Yeah. You're getting double the points. Uh, based yeah. on how both players are playing. All right, so I let's agree. see. Top USA captain's pick. So who would you take here as the top USA captain's pick out of these six? Oh, Brooks for sure. Okay, yeah, he's the favorite, and uh, you're definitely high on Brooks ending up as the best. Okay. Well, the thing is, Out though, of those six. Out of those six, Mark Howard is still not a great putter. And, you know, under pressure in, in the match play, there's a lot of putts you've got to make. You know, they may give you a putt three holes in a row, and then next thing you know, you've got to make this four-and-a-half-footer that's sideways or something. Now, the greens will probably be slow because the Europeans like them slower than the Americans. Okay. So that'll help be more aggressive. Ricky's a great putter, so he might be somebody. I Jordan has just had a baby, so I don't know. You know, he was even – was maybe not even going to go if his if his wife hadn't had Sophie yet, but he just had a little girl, so okay. um, they were going to pile everybody up and go in the private plane. So um, I don't know how much golf he's been doing, you know. So I would and and I say Colin's not a good putter. Sam hits a, is hitting it is hooking it right now, and then it depends on how much the how bad the rough is. So Ricky, great putter. He's I would do Ricky or Brooks. Well, I really am going to be interested to see how both Burns and Homa play in this because they've, we've talked about how they've struggled in majors. And that's a big event, obviously, with the big crowds. So it doesn't get much bigger than this. And I wonder how they'll uh, they'll take uh, to playing Ryder Cup golf. Uh, oh, question regarding Jordan Spieth and, and, and what you just said about uh, if – depending on when he was going to have his child uh, back when he played. Uh, and I, we're talking, you know, um, on, a, on the men's side, obviously. W would that have been the same? W would that have been the same reaction 
like let's say if Jack Nicholas was in the Ryder Cup and his wife was about to give or may have uh, you know a kid on the way, um, would that have been the same thing? Well, would you, would wait, you have heard Jack would have question. said, "Well, I would have stayed home," or would Jack would have been like, "Well, I'm just going to have to miss it." Oh, that's a great question. No, there's no question that I, in fact, that Jack would have continued to play. Um, so it's a different time is what my question. A different attitude now. It's more of a kind of a team thing when a baby's, you know, it, um, back then. In fact, when I was, when Greg Norman was having his first child, um, she, uh, Laura was pregnant and we were playing a series through Europe and it was Bernard Langer and Greg Norman against Beth Daniel and I, and we were playing a television series all through Europe and in Britain and in Europe. And, um, and, and, and Greg said, you know, I'm got to, every day I've got to see if Laura's had the baby. I mean, there was no question that he was going back. In fact, she did have the baby while we were in, in the okay. matches. Okay. So, was it more of, so is it, was it just each person individual was different back then or was it a, definitely a different time? And again, I'm talking about, you know, sixties and seventies. Yeah. Different time. Yeah. Different time. 70 and yeah. this was eighties, but yeah. So, um, there's, it was different. You know, the golf was more important. Maybe the, you know, you needed the money more. I mean, the money's more now. That's true. Got so much yeah, money. It doesn't true. mean that much. Yeah. You know? Yep. Definitely. Okay. Next up, uh, top USA rookie, and we have four on the board. So uh, pick one of the four on the board. Oh, oh I, I think realize. that's an easy one. Well, I didn't realize that Homer hadn't played a Ryder Cup. I know no, he played President's but Cup. But he's the favorite where you can get 260 for Clark or you can get five to one and the long shot is Harmon. And you I gotta would take go, Harmon. Gotta go, I agree. you got to go long shot. You know, match play is such a different game. Um, you know, momentum, making those six footers. There's you, you have seems like you have so many of them that mean so much in a match play event because you've only got 18 holes. Anything can happen in 18 holes. These players, anybody can beat anybody. You could put Ludwig and or um, up against Scheffler and he could win. I mean, you could pick Nikolai. I mean, you know, it's yeah. it, and in 18 holes, anything can happen and momentum and the in the gallery and, you know, I mean, golf's a game of inches anyway. Well, I think these I odds, would definitely go big odds. I, I think these odds in general are who, who will have the best uh, event, like who will have the most points, I guess, or percentages. Right. Uh, but yeah. Um, all right. Opening U.S. tee shot. They even have odds for this. Wow. So what do you think? Is this, is this a, based on your experience, who do you think it would probably be? Uh, a top player, a middle player, a specific player? Well, typically, you know, you're going to have to go with a, someone that's going to hit the fairway. So, you you know, okay. Scott scheffler has got great odds on the tee shots. Um, but again, he hasn't been playing that great. I would again. I would if it's going to be someone to hit the hit the fairway. You, you, you know, I would do a Brian or um, Max Home is a really good driver too. You know, so they so. just want somebody on the first. I mean, why is this so important though? Is this is or is this not really that important? It's over. It's like the flip of the coin in the Super Bowl. Like, how important is the the opening tee shot for the U.S.? Is it really that important? It's that important to see how they handle the pressure. Okay. It, is, it is crazy pressure. You've got noise. Okay. It's it's so built up. It is so built up. Okay. Um, and all and half the team will probably be there watching you. So it's like you've got both teams. You got ridiculous galleries and noise, and they get everybody all riled up. It's it is really it's really hard to to do it to be on that first tee. I mean, I'm telling you, every player I've talked to has said that is the most nervous they've ever been is on the first tee representing your country. Okay. So then the combination of obviously you have to be good, but you also have to be one of the better drivers. So who would that be? Who do you think? I mean, I mean, Cantlake could be the guy, but I don't know about his nerves. So, uh, 
I mean, with Harm, I mean, Harmon's 40 to one and we know how he handled his nerves in that. Ver- we just talked about it and he's, he's pretty consistent off the tees, but who do you think? Who do you think he's going to go, go with? Cause the odds are, uh, you know, the big difference between Scotty Scheffler and Brian Harmon and Max home is at 16 to one. I would go with Max. Max. Okay. I go with Max because he's, he's, he's been practicing a lot. And because it's his now I know it's his first one, but the two people I've heard of were been really working hard was uh, Wyndham and Max. So, okay. So there you go. It's a 16 to one. And so what is this first American player out on Sunday? What does that mean? Well, that means that the American gets the first pick. Oh, the first player. Okay. First so do, player. do they want to put their first player up, which is Scheffler? And assume that that they're going to get a Rory. Well, they're either going to get against Scheffler. You're going to get Rory or John or Ram or um, Victor. Okay. Excuse me, Hovland. So, which one of those three the Europeans going to put against Scheffler? That's going to be the decision. Because America gets to choose first. So, what do you think will be the since they're choosing first? Who do you think uh, Zach Johnson would choose first? Scheffler. Okay. So he's the favorite there at three to one. Now let's see. Let's go to the Europeans. So we'll start with the top European scorer. Who do you think is going to have the best Ryder Cup for all these European players? Bend, you know, obviously you got to roll the dice on the odds if you think that, uh, you know, uh, a player can maybe surprise. But not much. See, we, we, there's no Brian Harmon on, on this team. So... Uh, as we talked about, they're they're front loaded on this yep, team. Yeah, they are. So I don't think you guys, you can, you can make some money off the American team more than the European team because most of the top players will probably end up uh, hitting the board. You know what? But that, again, it's kind of like what we were talking about. You know, Nikolai Halgard, He had, you know, he's he's been playing well at the end. Um, so he only just made the team. Both of them uh, of the. Scandinavian guys at the last minute, you know, it's, it's not a bad one to go for. I mean, Sepp Schraka, look how good he's been playing. But, but that would have to be Ryder Cup. Who was the best European tour player this year's Ryder Cup? Sepp uh, Well, I think I would have said John Rahm for that. Okay. But. Well, five to one. It's not, not totally bad. It's better than Scotty Shuffler's three to one. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, in but Rahm's not playing well particularly well, though. No, and Tommy Fleetwood is. And so I mean, is Victor Hovland. Yeah, oh, well, Hovland's playing really well. Ho- Hovland has overcome his six foot, you know, missing those six footers under yep. pressure. I mean, look how many tournaments he blew at DP World Tour when he was on the European plane the off season when he'd missed that six footer in the end. But he, it's hard to, he's got, he's riding a lot of confidence. But, you know, Tommy Fleetwood might be a, a sleeper. Okay. Because, um, he's changed his golf swing, and you know how I, I like it when they oh, yeah. improve their swings. And and he's actually it's helped him. And he's gone into working out on his workout schedule. I don't know if you've seen it on YouTube, but it's really impressive. And um, he's he's actually turned into what I call American golfer, which is you know working out like crazy with a professional trainer and getting his golf swing. I used to not like his golf swing. I mean, you heard that all, all season where I kept saying he goes from open to close too quickly. But since he's changed his golf swing and he has that cutoff follow through, I'm actually impressed with Tommy right now. Yeah, he's got a next step. He's got a win on U.S. soil. That's his next step. I think step. he will. Yeah, he will. He's just he's too close all the time. And yeah, I, not a lot I, of people know who this Ludwig Aberg player is. And uh, yeah. if uh, if he and I, I, I'd be very interested to see how he handles it. He didn't handle himself very good a couple of weeks ago with the lead at uh, that big event over in Europe, uh, which I was very surprised how poorly he played on Sunday. Uh, but uh, we know how talented the kid is. And he's like the next really good player. Over yeah, in he's Europe. the next Victor Hovland for sure. So yeah. we'll see how he handles it. I OK, agree. Uh, let's see. Top. Uh, Great Britain and Ireland point scorer. Okay, so these are only players from Ireland or Great Britain. 
Which one would you go with? You got Fleetwood and Fitzpatrick at four to one, Hatton five to one, and the rest. Oh, you got Robert McIntyre's twelve hunt. Wow. Um, yeah, he's a long shot. He is. Yeah, but that's the thing with right. match play. You can go. You can go. Oh, it's the uh, point score. So again, this is cumulative is three that, days. You know, Terrell Hatton can pull things out. He's no, he's he's. I love his golf swing. Um, and uh, do you think Hatton uh, can 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 end up when it's all said and done with his with his the way he hand, the way he handles himself, which can be <laughs> kind of weird. Do you think he can lot. end up as the best your the best Ireland Great Britain player for the Ryder Cup for two thousand twenty three? No, uh, when you say it that way, no. Yeah. Well, that, <laughs> he does. He does have a temper, but yeah. you've got to remember that he's playing for with a team member. True. So it's totally different when you're playing for your country and for a team. Yep. So he's not going to do the crazy things he does for his individual when he goes for stuff when he shouldn't, and you know messes up. But if you go by that, Matt Fitzpatrick is someone that's really steady. Yep. You know, I mean, Fitz, he's great. Um, he's got a wonderful short game. He hasn't been playing that well. I mean, if you go by yeah. that, you probably got to go Rory. You know, I mean, he's the favorite. Yeah, it's not that far off from the others. He's three to one. Top English point scorer. So it's kind of odds are pretty much the same. Fleetwood, Fitzpatrick are the favorites. So who would you go there? Top top English scorer. Hmm. Depends on who they put him with. It's, I mean, Spitzy or Tommy. And again, um, this is for the entire three days. Yeah, but you got to remember they're playing. It's only really one individual match, and so it's all team stuff. Depends on. Yep. Well, you know, Justin's probably not going to play that many matches. Yeah, it would be a long shot if he were the best English. And who's, who's point the scorer. fittest? I would say, um, going to be. Tommy or Fitz or Fitzpatrick. Yeah, this they're, is a tough they're one. They're the two fittest. I'd probably stay away from this one because the odds are all low. And yeah, and, and you don't know. You know, they get tired. and de It depends on who they're teamed with. Rookie? Top European rookie? Aberg is the heavy favorite here. Huh, that's interesting. Would you would you roll with Straka or Hojgaard? Or, or, would you, or would you roll with the favorite? I don't think that Ludwig's that much better than everybody else under under rookie. I mean, I would say if, if it's a rookie, Straka. who's been playing the most? Robert McIntyre or Sepp Straka? Sepp's been playing on the on the American tour, and Robert makes plays on the DP World Tour. So um, they they've played more golf than Ludwig. You know, played more competition. So I wouldn't go with Ludwig as as the favorite. All right. Now here's the top European captain's pick. Who do you think is going to have the best Ryder Cup from these six captains' picks? Oh, Tommy Fleetwood. All right. So he's the favorite. You're going to go with him. Top continental European <laughs> point scorer. Wow. They got a, they, they got him from them all. So, I mean, Strzok is 9-1 to one here. Well, and you know what? He, he – you got to go with the bigger the, on on this kind of format with it being match play with you're it right. being foursomes. You got you partners to deal with, with, yeah. High odds and just putting a few dollars on it because you know everybody's expect you know the fate. Plus, you got to remember also that the favorites are going against favorites, so yep. it's a toss up. Yep. When you get the weaker ones, you know they can take they advantage. Can yeah. Yeah. All right. Opening European tee shot. <laughs> so we talked about the U.S. opening tee shot. It's going to be even more stressful on this side. So who does who do they go with to hit the first shot for Team Europe based on these odds? They're not going with any of the long shots. We could probably say that for sure, right? I mean, right. that would be too crazy. So what do you think? Are we coming down to like maybe – I mean, Rose is 12 to 1. Uh, yeah. Lowry 16 to one. Those are veterans, you know, uh, major champion veterans. Otherwise you go with the lower odds and the top players. What would you do? Go with the lower odds, gimme Rory easy one, or would you take the chance that they're going to take a chance and go with maybe a veteran? 
Let's see. That's a good one because the, you know, it, with Rory, I mean, he's got a lot to prove, and, and John Rum's been hitting a lot of fades. I don't know if you've noticed his ball's really got a lot of cut in it right now. Victor Hovland's probably a pretty good one because he's he's really been driving it great. All so, right. I mean, I know they say Rory's the best driver in golf right now because he's long and straight, but you you want straight in that one as much as you do the long. So. I would probably say Hovland or McElroy. Yeah, I, I, I would do Hovland or McElroy for sure. OK, and what is this? I would do Hovland. First European. And then first European player out on Sunday. Well, it depends on who they think is one and who's going to have the, yeah, that's this gallery. A little bit different. Say, I mean, John Rahm's probably more favored because Spain and Italy are so close, you know, the, the gallery wise. But I think for American TV, it's going to be probably Rory. Okay, so you think, you think you're, so? You, what you're saying is, and and hey, you know, maybe you could even do a parlay here. We can take both players. You're saying you think it's going to be Scheffler and Rory. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Maybe not a bad idea if you could parlay that. Just go with both, Scheffler and Rory. That'll definitely make uh, your day a little bit easier. Uh, as far as making a little bit more money. Okay, top point scorer overall. Okay, now we're not just going for each. This is overall. Who will be the top point scorer for this year's Ryder Cup? And there are some of the long shots at the bottom. Not sure we're going to go with any. Again, I think Harmon is the best long shot. But there we go with the other favorites. There's the top guys, Scheffler and McElroy. You know who I might go on this one is I might go with Ricky. You know, Ricky. Going to look, wow, Ricky. I love it. Ricky Fowler as the top point scorer for the 2023 Ryder Cup. And Ricky's at 25 to 1. I'll tell you why I think Ricky has got a good shot. He's been working in Florida on his game. They went, he went over a few weeks with some of the players went over and did a preview of the golf course. And they, he was one of them, obviously um, Jordan didn't go cause his wife looked like she was going to have her baby. And so some went and some didn't. Um, and I heard he played really well when he went over there and he's, he, he's, you know, he doesn't have anything to prove anymore because he played so well and he won a tournament. If he hadn't won a tournament it's kind of like Tommy, he would have been, he wouldn't even be here. Right. But the other difference is that he has an amazing short game. And when it gets down to match play, he, he still hits it long enough. But when you've got it, when you can put hit an unbelievable chip shot or a wedge shot close or make a putt that you weren't expecting your partner, your teammate to or your, your yep. opponent to make, it puts so much pressure on you. Like if you hit it inside, you know, someone like Ricky and he makes it, it is makes it so hard to make the putt. And he's, his putting is so good right now. Okay. So it's, since that's a long shot, uh, give me another uh, player or two because you've got some extra money now to spend. <laughs> so give me another player or two that you would go with. Uh, odds are pretty good on everybody, obviously, because this is a big ask. This is basically who's the best player of a tournament, who's going to be the best player of the Ryder Cup. Um, give me another guy that you would go I with. Like Maybe Max somebody not, so, so, not such a long shot. Max Homa is a good one too. Sixteen to one. Um, wow, that would be. I would be surprised if Max Homa did this because, again, I don't like the way he plays the, the big ones. But it would be great for his career if if he could just use this as a stepping stone. Yeah, but remember how good he played at Presidents Cup. Well, there you go. So well, in Presidents Cup, he was the he's the one that turned it around for them. Um, on the on the Saturday matches, remember on Saturday he made some unbelievable putts under pressure, and then the whole team was watching him, and he made a 15 footer, and he just drained it dead center. Love it. There you go, Max Homa, 16 to one. Uh, so you got a couple of nice long shots there, Fowler and Homa. Uh, top rookie score overall for both sides. You, well, you got well. Home is a, a favorite, so he's three to one. Or once again, you can go with a long shot like Harmon or Straka, or you got Clark at five to one. Who, who's I'm going, going with? Win. I'm going with Wyndham. Wyndham Clark at five to one. 
top. He captain. hits it long. He hits it long, and he's trying to, you know, he's trying to become one of those top players that you just name, you know, like a Rory and a John Rahm. And Mindley, yes, he's won an Open and he won won two big tournaments this year. But I think he wants to be established as one of those players. Okay. Top captain's pick score. Kepka. Oh, yes. I think that's a good one. Yeah, I can see why he's favored, and it's not that much difference, Fleetwood I guess. Fleetwood and Kepka are the favorites. you got Fowler at 9-1, to one, and you've got Straka at 18. Well, maybe maybe this is one again where you go with Nikolai. You know, Nick, you know, because you think of how well he played. You know, I mean, I I took him in um, our one and done and did pretty well with him in one of the events. Nice. I think, you know, if this is a this is something. It's such a toss up on these kind of bets that they've given you that it there's nothing favored. Like I said, in eighteen holes, it's not anything that could. And when you play in team events with your foursomes, what happens if your player hits it in the rough and sure. you're not used to being in the rough? Or, you, you know, they're trying so hard and they're nervous and the rookies, anything can happen. Well, we just said, you know, maybe this is the event that everybody learns type of player Aberg is. Well, maybe we'll get an opportunity to see how good Nikolai Hosgard can become if he can play as well as... Uh, you were saying he might be able to. Okay. Yeah, because I'm worried about Sepp Straka. I would have taken Sepp because I like his golf game, but a couple of times he had pressure on him and he failed miserably this year. Okay. And then here are the odds for player to get winning half point. Now, isn't this just luck or is this strategy mostly? What we, w Which way are we going? Strategy or well, luck or a combination of the two? I agree. Half point is a tie. So that means that they've come back and, you know, they, they've hung in there or, I mean, typically a tie means that somebody is want, wins on the last hole. It seems like it, it, every time I've, you know, ties mean that you've come down to the last hole. So you so either player to get won. winning half point. This is, this is, they're saying this is going to be the player that's going to win the, it's going to, we have now won the Ryder cup based on this player getting us this half point or winning point. Oof. That's that's what I'm assuming they're saying here. So this that's why I said this is a lot of luck. And there's also, like you were saying, depending on how you're trying to strategize where a specific player is going to go, because that's the that's the match that you're trying to win the event from. And if that's the case, we'll, we'll, again, a lot of this is luck. But what do you think? Wow. And it could be, hey, if this goes down to the wire and the winner wins with like two, we're on the second to last like group. Now you're looking at long shots. Now you're looking at players who like we just talked about that are not going to play until late. So right. maybe this is one of those uh, time, But if it's a Ryder Cup that you think the USA or Europe is going to win, uh, they won with five to go, five matches to go with six. Points. Well, that's different. So it all depends. So. I'd rather just go with the strategy myself of what if it's tight and it goes over down to the last guy or two. Let me take a few of these long shots that might not play until late. Yeah. I mean, I think if you took a Jordan Spieth, um, someone like him that he pulls out some miraculous shots, you know, I mean, he can hit some shots when you think he's dead. So he could have, he, he can hold one out of a bunker and tie the match or, well, he and could be somebody that's also right there, dead middle. Right there. Again, I think this is just all luck. It is. It is. It, it really is. And, you know, if, if that's going to happen, I would say. I think you're um, wasting your money on this wager. Yeah, I would I would take Jordan because okay. I know he can pull things out. If he's one down, he's, he's, a lot, he's never going to give up. Okay, there's the foursomes, the four balls. By the way, do you favor any particular team with the four balls or the foursomes? Or not, well, not really. Justin and you know Justin and Jordan are going to be paired together because they they won all their matches in Presidents Cup and in former Ryder Cup, so they they're pretty experienced. So I I could see them going out for both both morning and afternoon matches and playing together unless they unless they lose because they've never they haven't lost. Um, so I would think they're a strong team because they've got 
a great record and they're good friends and they're comfortable. If I see anything, I, I see maybe they might put Ricky with Justin because all three of them are very close. Yeah. So they might change it up that way. Those two are good. I would say. Well, this is the, this is I've moved on now to tournament correct score. This is this is the big one. This is what do you think will be the winner winning score? Oh, wow. So if you think USA is going to win a close one. Well, you're, you I know, do. you got I ten, do. you got 10 to one for 14 and a half, 13 and a half. You got 11 to one for 15, 13 and so on. I like the 14 and a half, 13 and a half. This one. The, so the lowest one, 10 to one was 10 to one. Nothing wrong with 10 to one. That's a good number. Even yeah, for the I, I like closest. that one. I think that's, that's going to be, that's the closest you can be to winning. Yeah. I, I like that one. Wow. Okay. So you're going with, this is going to be nail bitingly close. Yes. And the USA is going to barely win by basically a half a point. Yes. All right. There you go. And if it was, uh, if it was in America, it wouldn't be close, but with it being international. Um, how about we've got day one, correct score. Anything here that opens your eyes again? I like the I like the five to three USA. Okay, that's at five fifty. And day two. That's four cents, isn't it? Yep. I would I would do year I would do America five to three again. Okay, so just stick the five to three on both. Well, and typically, um, if if the way it has been in the past. The foursomes and four ball have been closer than it's usually the individual where the American runs away with it. That's always okay. been the way it has. So okay. if anything, I would give Europe maybe foursomes. Um, I might give them, you know, the in the foursomes, I may give them the heads up. But in the individual, typically the Americans run away with it. Okay, and then here's the individual. Three. The only Singles time they did three. it, they, one time in Medina, they lost it. Um, but I think it was because they chose the wrong people to go against the individuals. So, okay. So then singles day three, if, if you think they're going to win, like, well, there you go. If they win eight to four, say it's 10 to one. If they win seven and a half to four and a half, it's nine to one. What do you think the score will, will be on day three singles? Either seven to five or eight to four, Europe, America. So that's six fifty or ten to one. Okay, cool. Well, that sure is enough. <laughs> There's a lot of weird bets. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely it's like the Super Bowl almost with the bets, um, but uh, you definitely with a better chance of making money because the odds are a lot better than a lot of those Super Bowl props. But yeah. yeah, it's going to be, uh, uh, I agree. I think it's going to be very close. I, I don't see why not. There's just so much talent on both sides. The parity is like we've never seen it. But yes, I think the advantage that the USA has is definitely the fact that they've got guys. I mean, for Brian Harmon to be considered like the, the long shot on the USA just shows you that the USA has the depth, clearly. And without question, they have the strength, yeah. yeah. The last four players on the European team are all rookies. And I tell you right now, I'm going to I'm gonna find ways to throw a few bucks on Brian Harmon on a few of these props. I agree. I right, agree. His odds I mean, are big all over the place. He's underrated, for sure. Yep. I mean, the guy won the, the, the Open Championship in Europe. Well, and not what only that, he I mean, he's, he's, he's having a good year anyway. He is having that. a good year. Yes. That wasn't a fluke. No. So... All right, Jan, I appreciate it. Uh, you, uh, you did a great job uh, from start to finish. And uh, that's it pretty much, I believe, for our 2023 coverage. I doubt we're going to have anything else to talk about, but you never know. Uh, so uh, I know when we talk in 2024, the first week of 2024, we're going to have a lot of fun uh, doing our fantasy teams again. Yep. Yeah. And I'm learning a lot now. I know how to do it better. <laughs> Yeah, maybe you guys can... switch me. I'm not that let that happen again. See, there you go. Now that you know what you're doing. And uh and also, you know, who knows? Maybe we could even find some other uh participants. That would be fun. We can get yeah. more than just the three of us. But either way, you can bet 
that the three of us were ready to go for 2024. And Jan, what's next for you? You're uh, you're heading to yep. Australia soon, right? Yeah, I am. I'm going to host the Australian Open, which is good because in Australia we have um, the, Pete, the women's and the men's play at the same time on the same on two golf courses, and then after they make the cut, they both play on the on the Australian Golf Club. So it's it's really fun. I love that event. And then they have the all abilities as well come on the weekend and play. So you have a group of PGA, a group of LPGA, and then the all abilities. So it's you can sit on a bleacher and watch all, all kinds of golf. It's great. Well, have a safe, fun trip to your homeland. And we Thank look you. forward to uh, talking to you because when you're going to, you're going to be getting back right about the time where we're going to be uh, getting involved for the 2024 season and putting that yeah. fantasy team together. So make sure you yeah. do your homework. I know it'll, I'll be ready to go, but I'm going to play next week uh, for the Legends event. I'm going to go up to Versailles, Kentucky, and at the Woodford Reserve Woodford Club, and and play a, an event up there. So that'll be fun. It's uh, be nice. I mean, with all the video that they have nowadays, I mean, it would be nice if they had like video coverage of some of these events in some yeah. way. Yeah, I, I actually form. think they're going to do that next year. They're going to stream them. Cool. All right, Jan. Thanks a lot. Thanks. We'll talk Bye, to you Greg. soon. Take care. Thank you.